Now in this video I'm going to try to cover the valve adjustment on a Suzuki GS 1100E. This is a 1982 model, in fact I have two of them. I'm going to try to do the valve adjustment on camera, give you some idea of it's a relatively simple job, but a few things you can do to make it easier. Now, this is the bike we're going to be doing a valve adjustment on. But we're going to try to do two things at once and I'll do a separate video of polishing up this valve cover. It's been polished out at the edges, it's not polished in at the center. And that's one of the things I wanted to do while I have the valve cover off this time is do a thorough polishing. I'll make a separate video of that. Now of course one of the handiest things to have when you're going to do any maintenance on a bike is the, uh, the factory manual. So the first thing to consider, and that the bike manufacturers have a predetermined amount of mileage that they expect you to uh, do a valve inspection and adjustment this bike because it's very easy to do. It's uh, relatively straightforward. There's no shims, there's just rocker rums. Relatively easy to do, they expect you to do it at certain mileage intervals. Another way, and this is a way that uh, my late friend and world-class engine tuner, world-famous Kenny Augustine, gave me another tip. He says if a bike doesn't idle right or run right on top end, one of the things it can be is it's overdue for a valve adjustment. Well, toward the end of the year this year, this bike has been a little prone to stumbling during idling. I put a new set of plugs in. That didn't seem to make much difference. So it's probably telling me, and because we ride this bike relatively hard, and even though we're not at the mileage interval they call for, we're going to do a valve adjustment anyway. And no matter what, if you, if you pull the valve cover off, which again is relatively simple, and the valves are all in adjustment, which sometimes they are. In fact, on this bike, several times they've been in total adjustment. Uh, didn't hurt a thing, and you feel comfortable about it. Now one tool that I'm going to use, and I made this on a separate video, is a, a little map of where the bolts go, and I went to Circle Cycle and got a brand new gasket. Now there's always things you can do to make the job as easy as possible. Number one, you want to do it when the engine is cold. You don't want to do it when the engine is hot or it's still cooling down after a ride. So in, in the case of this, I've let this bike sit overnight. And step one again, just to make everything easy, is to pull the seat and the fuel tank off. It gives us a lot better access to the work that we're going to do. In fact, if you're pro eh, you really couldn't. I've never tried doing it, but probably you could. Somebody with little tiny fingers could pull us apart. I don't know. They say in the manual to take a tank off. I've always taken the tank and the seat off. Now, a little trick I use. Again, not a big deal. I use a rubber hammer to hold the back of the tank up. I disconnect the, the wires that go to the fuel gauge and the fuel and vacuum lines. Just makes it a little bit easier. Now while I'm doing this type of work, this is a real handy thing. You get it free from Harbor Freight. Another little handy thing. And these little lights, when you're doing this, I want to show this. This is a handy trick. This is so bright when you're working under the tank or in, a, in an area that the light isn't good. Super handy to have this, and the best part of all, it's free from Harbor Freight. Just one example of how handy that light can be when you've got to look up under there and loosen some screws, pull some vacuum lines, or disconnect some wires. Very, very handy. This is a small thing, but something that works for me. What I always do is when I take a motorcycle apart, I lay the parts in a row. So I know when I go to put this back, as simple as this may be, I go down the row this way and that's the way the parts assemble. Same thing with the bolts that come out. Now it's a habit of mine at any time I have a, a motorcycle apart like this I always do two things. I try to clean up any dirt or dust. Remember this is a 35 year old motorcycle and I always look around at all the cables anything that's rubbing on something any of the wires look loose sometimes the zip ties come loose Look at the fuel lines, make sure the fuel lines aren't getting rock hard. In this case, this one is. I may replace that vacuum line. We did replace the fuel line not long ago. Um, and we're going to pull a valve cover, of course. And what happens with this is I was able to polish in here with 
conveniently. Now I'm going to get to polish the whole thing. And I'll make, of course, a separate video out of that. That's going to be a, probably a, a good chunk of time of a project. Another little trick, and I learned this. This was, this was one of the things I've done. In the summer, I take this little black cover on the air filter off. Bike runs a tiny, tiny bit leaner. In the winter, I leave the cover on. It runs just a tiny bit richer. Just like a, a tip that... And again, I don't remember who even told me that. Somebody else who had a GS, but it seems to work well. Now, I want to get the spark plug wires up out of the way, but I want to make sure that these little ident uh, things that come from the factory identify which cylinder this goes to, although I don't think there's much chance you'd get it wrong. This one is cylinder four. Make sure I can still read them. If not, I have a brother P-Touch, and I have replaced them in the course of uh, working on a bike several times or doing any kind of maintenance I want to make sure they all have the right number on them and they do and I'll get a zip tie and tie them up out of the way again every one of these little steps is just meant to make it easier to do it relatively easy job no reason to make it harder that is a really good reason to keep the grease and oil off of any engine especially an air-cooled engine all the air-cooled engines are challenged by getting rid of the heat from combustion, especially when you ride hard. If you ride around like uh, you're on a, a Vespa scooter, probably not a problem. But if you're going to try to be uh, keeping up with the big boys that have the water-cooled bikes, the modern bikes, well, I like to keep it as clean as possible. Now, the other reason for keeping it clean in here, once I pull this cover, I've got to pull all the screws off, pull this cover, I don't want all this grease and stuff dropping down into the engine. And I know a lot of my friends give me a hard time about cleaning bikes and oh, it's been too much time polishing and cleaning. But I, on a day like today, I really like working on a clean bike, not a rust bucket. Now one of the final things is to take, take the fresh air. I don't want any of that stuff getting down in the engine. Any dust, any dirt. Get as much of it cleaned up as I can. I want that to be totally clean. So this worked out well today, the short session that we had. I got everything cleaned up, everything prepped. We're ready to pull a valve cover next time we get to do a work session. And this is the way I like to do things. If I can't finish in one day, I don't like to rush through. I can do this in bites. And, and getting all the cleanup done the day before a big job makes it a lot easier. And I'm, <laughs> unfortunately, I don't have giant gaps of time because I babysit every day. But we are all totally prepped up. I got the bolt map ready, got the new gasket. We're totally clean, got the manual ready. So next time we get to work on this, it'll be time to adjust the valves. How, can this be cut in How half? good is that? Did you get it cut in half? It is cut in half, but it's not it cut all the way through. It's cut in half. No, it's not. It's not cut all the way through. Oh, okay. The Grammy will cut it all the way through. What? How great! How great is this? Bagels with Grandpa Wendy. You gonna help me work on a motorcycle later today? Yeah. <laughs> I thought so. I'd do a good job too. So in this session, now it was nice that the day before this we got the engine all cleaned up as well as we could. The next step on this is going to be get out the bolt map and one by one take out all the bolts and put them into the bolt map in exactly the same position they are. Not a critical thing, but it just makes this a little bit nicer. Now here's where having a bolt map comes in pretty handy. One by one as I take these out. And again, I did that on a previous video because I wasn't sure if anybody had used it before. And among my friends were all backyard mechanics of sorts. And a lot of times a job like this, one bolt will be just a little bit longer, a little bit shorter, or something. But if I take the bolt out, one by one, wipe them clean. Uh, before I put these back, they're all going to get polished anyway. So I can take this and put it right into the bolt map. And again, on, on some jobs, especially taking a head off an engine, or sometimes a job like this, one washer will have... One bolt will have a washer in it, one will have a rubber washer. Some are different, some are just a little longer or shorter. And the one thing you can do with these bolts that's a real problem 
If you over over tighten them, and I mean there's a torque setting for them, the torque settings in the manual of course, and if you over tighten them, you really can run the risk of stripping one of them out. So I'm real careful about putting the same bolt back in and getting the torque just right. And after all the bolts are out and in the bolt map, the last thing will be I'll take the speedometer drive off and we're ready to pull the valve cover. As shown, one of the tools that makes working out in a garage where a lot of times it's below freezing palatable is my quartz heater. And by the way, this quartz heater, I've had it over 20 years already. I've had it for almost as long as I live in this house. Totally perfect for this kind of work. It heats, it heats just enough that you can bear to be out here and that your, your rear end doesn't freeze to the seat or whatever. And, and supposedly it doesn't use that much electricity. I don't know because Karen pays the bill. Now here's an example of why I like to have a bolt map. These screws are, and I've added this to the list. As I'm putting the bolts in here, I find is I had made a mistake on a bolt map there. There's not a bolt there. I guess some of the, the other models that this gasket fits, there is a bolt there, but getting them out, the ones, the ones in the filter, the top of the engine valve cover, are definitely shorter than the other ones. And if you were to mix these up, have them all in, a, in one bucket, for a do-it-yourself mechanic like myself, this, it might be an issue. Now sometimes the speedometer drive can be a little difficult. You've got to do a little wiggling and woggling. There we go. Another thing before I put this back, I'll, I'll grease that cable. When to do that, I disconnect that from the, uh, the speedometer and just let some oil drip down there until it drips out of here, which usually takes about five minutes. When I assemble this, I'll put some oil, put, plug that back in. And if you forget to do that, you won't have a tachometer. You'll have a speedometer, but not a tachometer. <laughs> and by the way, this is really funny. If you look over at the, uh, not really that funny, you look over at the parts bike, and that's a, I have a clean title for that bike too. I don't, I don't know why I'm pirating so many parts off it. it. It's like a Christmas, Luciano calls it a Christmas tree. I need, you notice there's no uh, tachometer cable. One day I was coming home from a ride, tachometer cable broke. No need to even go on eBay or go to a dealer. You <laughs> just take it off the parts bike. Love having a parts bike. Now there were a few of these the screws here, I have an impact driver. Because what happens if you use a regular screwdriver, I've found a lot, a lot of times what'll happen is, and you can't, re, you can't switch these, these, these around. Once you booger them up, they're really terrible. But, and again, that's why we have a bolt map. Put that right in a bolt map. And I, I would not want to over tighten any of these screws. There's a torque setting in a manual. I set the torque wrench when I'm all done. And believe me, when you, when you strip one of these, it's a nightmare. Now these have little washers under them. So I want to be careful. I got to put these right in the bolt map where they belong. Now here's a tip that I found works pretty well over the years is these screws, these four screws, as soon as I'm starting to work on the job, I take some penetrating oil and spray it around them because these, the problem with all these Phillips head screws, let me just show this, and it's not, it's not an issue that you can't run around, but see what happens after so many times of taking them on and off and we've had these valves adjusted. I'm going to try to go get new screws for these. It, what's going to happen is they just get boogered up after a while. They're soft metal screws, and to be honest, this is one of the things I wish I could uh, find a permanent cure for. Maybe some Allen bolts that would fit in there or something. I'm going to look into this while I have it apart. So we've got the caps off, speedometer disconnected. This whole side of the engine now is ready, and what will happen is I'm going to go, go have a cup of coffee because it's really cold out here. And I'm going to do the same exact thing on the other side, put all the bolts in a bolt map. And when I get done with that, we'll be ready to pull that valve cover off and adjust some valves. 
And of course this side is just a mirror image of the other side, but I do want to keep those both separated. And I already sprayed some some uh, penetrating oil on these. Let's let that soak in, just so we don't booger up those bolts any worse than they are. And it's funny, even in, even the impact driver with the correct tip, it, they still, they're just soft bolts. And so far the bolt, the little bolt map has worked out pretty well. We're ready to do the other side. And some of these are shorter. Uh, these, these are shorter. If you were to just have these and mix match them up, maybe you'd get away with it. But this really is a cheap insurance for the do-it-yourself mechanic. Okay, all of the bolts are out. And of course, this is the little tricks that there's a little, this is the bolt that holds the, um, the cable, the, the clutch cable. And these are all going to go back to polish when we do the, the valve cover. It's going to be a separate video. And all of these bolts are going to get polished. But they'll get polished and they'll get put right back, right in the exact spot that they were. So there's no chance. And there's three different lengths. And some have little rubber washers and some have no washers. So I'll be very happy to keep them in sequence. And that's a very easy little thing. Again, I made a little separate video of that. Share that with my friends. The fellowhood of backyard mechanics. Now, if I can't find appropriate screws for these, these little valve cover ends, I thought one of the other choices I have, I have a whole other motor here, I can pull the screws out of that. End. I'm not sure these are in any better condition. Yeah, I guess they are. I guess they're not bad. And I don't know, the person that had the bike before me, maybe he never had the valve cover off. I don't know. But it is super handy to have a parts bike. So now the next part of this, I took compressed air, cleaned so there's no dust and dirt and anything up there before I give go to pull this valve cover off. I'm, if it's sticky now, here's the thing, if it is sticky, what I'm going to do is just tap, just gently with a rubber hammer. You don't want to whack this. Now, there's a couple of interesting things here I want to see when I go to pull this off. Uh, 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 okay, looks like it's coming off okay. When this is stuck in place, it can really be a, a pain in the neck. Because what happens is, you know, just jig this around. There's a rubber hose in the back here, and it, that ru that rubber hose, I got to disconnect that first. What happens to that rubber hose, it's probably uh, four or five years now since I replaced that hose. It gets rock hard from the heat going up into the engine all the time. So that's a hose that I know I have extra hose. I'll replace that hose. In fact, I'll take it off before I pull that valve cover off. Now this is a piece of hose, and... Uh, it connects the air box to that valve cover part of the breather system, but if what happens is this gets rock hard, you can see it's split. So as I go about this, I'm going to check, as I'm putting it back together, all the fuel lines, the vacuum line, anything needs replacing. Of course, I have a whole uh, a bucket full of new hose material. I don't like to leave this on the bike forever. This is the kind of thing that cheap insurance. So well, now i got to be real careful. And if it's my lucky day, in fact, I can move this over. If it's my lucky day, I can get the valve cover gasket not to stick to anything and come out in a million pieces. This seems to be in the way. I'm not going to reuse it, of course, but I don't. Eh, it came out in a couple of pieces anyway. See, this is the whole thing. Now, this is, this is when it's your lucky day. There's very little work to cleaning up this surface. And what I did when I put this on it was, at the time, it was Luciano's idea to put wheel bearing grease on the gasket. These are little caps that go on the end. And so that's beautiful. That couldn't be any better than that. Wow. Came off in a couple of pieces. Now I'm just going to clean that area up. And these little rubber pieces, they're hard rubber, of course. When I put them back, I'll take some sealer, some gasket sealer, because they really do need to seal. And the one time I forgot to do that, I wound up having a, a small leak. I had to take the whole thing apart again. And just take these out. Make sure everything's clean in there. Any little surface that needs to be scraped, I'll scrape that with a brand new razor blade.
Of course, the thing is here, I want to scrape away from the engine. And when I'm all done, I'll take the shop vac, so just in case any of this little gasket material does fall in there. And this doesn't have to be like a polished surface, but anything you can get around, just ensure that that's going to be... And we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to do the same thing with the grease. That gasket came off way better than it has in the past when I've... And, and I feel sorry for anybody that puts one on with, with gasket sealer. That's just asking for trouble. Now the next thing we need is a coffee break. But... This is the big thing. This this part now, ready to go and be polished. So what I did, I sprayed it with a little bit of diesel fuel. Just let it soak in. We'll bring that down to the by the polishing wheel later and make a separate video. In the meantime, what we need, and and I always say that the, the preparation for a job is the biggest part of the job. Well, now that we've got this all apart, just physically adjusting the valves is going to be relatively straightforward. But I do want to show it in in as good a detail as I can. Now on a day like today when the lovely Mrs. Ertnowski makes me a really hot cup of coffee to have with lunch, <laughs> the, you only know what this tastes like when you're freezing out in a garage for a couple hours. Back out in the tundra, the first thing we have to do, pull off this side of the engine and we have to set it. There's two set marks on the crankshaft. And once that cover is off, we can set the crankshaft as per the manual. Now there are two setting points on it, on the crank. When you set half of the valves, you go to the second set point and set the second half. And they're all four thousandths. Now as you turn the crankshaft, you can right, right in the window, you can see it, it's marked. There's a mark and it says one and four. That means we're going to do the first part of this adjustment. Now just to make this job easier, what I did is I took the four thousandths, the feeler gauge, and cut it in half because you need it, you need it to be a lot thinner so you can get down in where we're going to be doing the adjustment. Just makes it a lot easier to get in there and check it. Now the other thing you check, and these notches in both sides of the cam have to face outward for the first setting of the valves, and you you do these two. I got to look at the book. The and go by the way. Then you turn this 180 degrees, line up the mark again. These these will now face in the opposite direction, and then you can do these two. In other words, you can do half. There's two cycles to getting these. And most of the time, when you, you can common sense figure it out, you have to be off the cam lobe. <laughs> you can't adjust the valves when the cam is opening the valve. The, it has to be in the free part of the valve adjustment. Now, we don't have a real good macro lens on this camera, but I wanted to show just this is the test. You want to be able to put the, the feeler gauge in there and just a slight amount of tension on it. If you can't force the feeler gauge in there conveniently, it's probably a little too tight. Now that's just about right, just about there. And of course, this is a unique engine. There's no shims. It just has these these kind of rocker arms that follow. And this one is loose. You know, this one, the rocker, this just fell right in there. See, there's no tension on it. So we're gonna what we're gonna do is loosen this nut, adjust it here. Tighten the nut back and make this so already the first way when you just get this. And this can be time consuming because we've got the engine set. It should just be ever so slightly tight. Ever so slightly. And this one you can see is just sloppy loose. So this one will make a little bit tighter to start with. Now again, the worst scenario is if they're too tight. And this one, I can't even get the feeler gauge down in there. And that's an exhaust valve. That's not good. So this one has to get, there. Yeah, we got it finally in there. But that is, that's way too tight. So that one's going to come loose by about a thousandth. This one fit right in real nice. So I've got, out of the first four I checked, I've got two that need to be adjusted. Now if you have the Suzuki tool, it makes it doing this a little bit easier. But 
they you just use a nine millimeter wrench just loosen that at the same time I'm using a pair of just ordinary forceps because that allows me to just keep track of as I tighten this it takes very little to change the setting and I don't want to change it radically I want to go down this is the loose I, well, I got to check it anyway but you, you want to keep track of where that was when you started I don't want to go and, and unturn it I just want to take as loosen a nut is just enough that I can turn that and then get that fine adjustment check it with the with the little feeler gauge once I got that little bit of drag just a slight drag hold it hold the adjuster and then tighten the wrench now I've got just the right amount of drag on that I have the forceps in place Whoop. Now it's hard to do this without a really good macro lens, but now we have just the right amount of drag on that. Just the right amount of drag on that one. I just want that slight amount of drag. Okay, now I want to turn the crank to the other mark. It is, this is kind of self-explanatory, and that's why it always pays to have the manual. Now with that mark aligned, the cam marks aligned, I can set the rest of the valves. And what happens here is once you do one, you get kind of a feel for it. The second one goes a little faster. And usually there's only one or two that need to be really adjusted. But I think the worst scenario to always watch out for is that one is really too tight. And it's absolutely true that once you do this a few times you can feel it right away if it's got that little drag on it if if you really have to push to get that underneath that's a problem if it's a little sloppy the worst that happens is you have a little bit of a valve tick or a little bit of noise but when it's too tight you can burn a valve again this is this is the having the manual and I can't do this all in one session because of the way my life is after babysit I have to go get shopping with Karen so I've chopped this up into several sessions but by the end of this session I want to have all the valves adjusted and be ready to well hopefully be ready to polish that cover well it's a good feeling to have this this part of the job done anyway and needless to say there were four, four that were out. Two were tight, two were loose. The rest were okay. The bolt map worked better than I thought it would. Super easy, super convenient. I got all my parts laid up for once we get. Now, see, the problem is, before I can put this back together, I have to spend a day polishing that valve cover, or some amount of time anyway. But the bottom line is, thanks to the manual, thanks to being very, very patient, uh, and this is something I really I really did take my time doing this the next day we'll have on this will be a polishing day but then we'll come back to the project of putting this all back together and of course the best part of all a nice test ride and this is always what's great about having a place to, to hang out on a day when it's below freezing and having that quartz heater going and uh, that warm coffee Well, as you can imagine, this job stretched over several days where well, we had to break it up into several parts. But the next part of this, the bike's all adjusted and we're ready. I'm ready anyway. Start polishing up all the parts I want to polish and repolish before the next session. And of course, all the bolt ends, clean up all the bolts. This, this motorcycle I've owned since the day it was brand new and... It has very rarely disappointed me. I want to keep it for a long time to come. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And of course, thanks for watching. And thanks for sharing all the information on YouTube.